Good morning. We're all back here again. You've made it this far, challenger. Anyways, I don't know why I said that, but... So, now, this video will probably be really easy if you've watched the other, um, like, two on how to do things before you hold your bow. And the whole point, I mean, like, the whole point I did all of those is once you've understood how to do it with a pencil, then all you have to do is transfer these same ideas and concepts to the violin bow. Of course, it's not going to be, like, one-to-one -one or anything like that like perfect but it'll be like oh you know i kind of already know how to do this i already learned all of this but let's just first of all start out with what the bow is right this is what we use to create the sound on violin and this is the frog right this is the frog this is a frog right and then this is the tip of the bow at the moment and so it's kind of unimportant like these things but just like no we do not touch the hair on the bow because this is horse hair and it's magical and no but like our fatty disgusting greasy human fingers have oil on them and it'll if you touch it a lot then it'll always then it destroys the hair and so that's why we whenever you see like anyone hold their instrument or hold their bow it's always like I maybe mean, that'll, that'll be a good idea some bow holding etiquette so we always we can hold it from right here at the frog right when we're not playing when we're not playing, we can hold it like this, with this a fist, or you can hold it like this sometimes, with it out, or you're just like your thumb like this, or I don't know, you know, there's a lot of things. Just try to be more positioned towards the frog instead of touching the hair, right? So, now that we know that. So, now that we've done all these exercises, now we can just take the same things we did with the pencil and just put them on the violin bow. So now we have our handy dandy left hand here, right? So our left hand is right here, helping us hold it, hold the bow, so that the right hand doesn't have to hold it. So we're going to make our C again, right? And now, the thumb is going to open up and it's going to go into this little divot right here. If you can see that, I don't know if you can see that very well. But this little divot right here, we want to go in right here. And then the fingers are going to fold over and try to be on, well, I, this isn't, try to be on this little dot with these two fingers. Maybe just do this a couple of times and try to be on this dot. And then the first finger is going to fall on this little black thing right here. And then we're going to put our pinky up. And so this is our bow position, right? So I'll do that again because that was like kind of a lot of information. So look at this divots right here. We want to get the thumb right here. So make our little... C with these two fingers, make our C, put it in the divot. Let these finger, let the ring finger go over this little dot, or you can do this. I prefer the ring finger, so we're gonna have the ring finger over this little dot, and then have the middle finger go down next to it. And then we want a little bit of space between the middle finger and the pointer finger. I'll try to like keep everything a little bit more up and not just instantly go into my normal position. And then we put the pinky down and it has to be curved just like on the pencil, right? And so now you see that um, this is exactly just like holding the pencil, right? And so now we can kind of tilt our wrist a little bit if that makes any sense. We don't want to be like this. A lot of people when they start out their wrist is really tense and I don't know if you can see it efficiently. But we don't, we just have like a slant upwards. But actually, I don't know if you can come up over like this. We want kind of, again, this nice arch shape in our hand when we're holding our bow. We want this arch. So aim for that arch. Try to get this arch. Because that means that our hand is lower than the wrist or something. I don't, I don't know the whole human anatomy of it, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest here. But we want this arch. So aim for this arch. That arch is your goal at the moment. So again, make sure your left hand is holding it. Just left hand helping the right hand learn something. <laughs> and it'll be the opposite way around too when we start doing other things. But so C divots, dot, first finger, pinky. And now we can do some, some of those exercises again. You can just take all those exercises that you already know and then just put them to this and it's like the same exact thing, right? So we can go pinky, 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 pinky. We can just move this up and down. We can move this finger, right? This is just the same exercises. So if you really did do all the other exercises efficiently and actually practice them for like two or three days, this shouldn't be anything new. The biggest thing I would say is the difficulty is again, the weight of all, the weight of the bow is actually at the frog, right? And so that's why we started with the pencil because it's really tempting to let the bow fall. Wait, that, I did the wrong direction. 
if we don't have enough grip on the bow, then the bow wants to fall like this. And this is like, because this is where all the weight is, right? And so we're always balancing um, the weight of the bow with our hand. And so we can just do some of these things and we can do this other exercise again. So this, so eventually the goal is to be able to hold the bow without the left hand, right? Without the left hand holding it. So just maybe going up. So once you have a good bow, hold, oh, what is a good bow? Once you feel comfortable holding the bow alone with just the right hand, then you can go up and down. Up, I'm gonna go back for a bit, you know, up, down. Up, down. Up, down. And this will really teach your hand because the bow is actually pretty heavy to comparison with the pencil. Up, down, or you can go left and right. Sorry for that like random interlude. <laughs> no, it's not one day. Oh, I guess it's like one day. I don't know, who cares? So <laughs> we're back. And so um, we did this up and down motion. Now we can go left, right, left, <laughs> right. And just doing this motion, right? Because this is the whole motion of bowing. And um, make sure that you're being kind of careful. The bow is actually pretty long <laughs> uh, at the beginning when you first start playing. And uh, make sure you're not just like running into walls and stuff. Like that's... <laughs> That's, I mean, just be kind of careful. Just just be conscious of where, how much space you need to actually use the bow, right? So you're gonna left, right, up, down. Left, right, up, down. Left, right, up, down. And this is the same as that last exercise we did with the, um, in the other one with the pencil. And you always want to make sure, again, the whole point of all of these exercises is to build into your um, subconscious mind that we this is what your this is what you want your hand to automatically go to no matter what. So the whole point of this is so if I were to pick up my bow over here in this angle, my hand can automatically go there. Or if I were to pick it up like this, my hand can automatically go there without me thinking about it. And that's the whole point is to train your mind to do it automatically. That's like one of the biggest important things to realize in music. We're not trying to consciously um, do stuff as much as we think we are. The biggest thing we're trying to do is make sure that our subconscious mind really just starts doing things automatically, but the right things automatically, right? And so, yeah, that's almost it. So once you've done all of these exercises with the bow and stuff like that, and you feel comfortable, then you're almost there. This is like, oh, I guess it's turned into a beginner series on, um, I don't know how to start playing violin, I guess. <laughs> I, that wasn't really the goal, but I mean, that's what it turned into. So that's what we're going to do. And so the next video will be how to make your first sounds on violin, right? And um, wow, I mean, I think if you really um, watch all of these videos and take about two or three days for every one of these videos, I feel like you will avoid so many pitfalls of playing and like when you're first starting out and that kind of thing. Because I know a lot of people try to learn on their own in the beginning and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But uh, if you're going to learn on your own, be sure to just... Okay, I'm not trying to like plug myself in or anything like that, but if you're going to learn violin on your own, please watch all of these videos and take your time and don't even watch all of my videos. Go watch a lot of other videos too to really learn what it takes and what you need and other people's ideas because you don't just try to free do this on your own. I mean, there, there's no reason to do it on your own. There's so much free information out there on YouTube. So just take that and use that to your advantage. And, um, well, that's the video for today. Happy practicing! <laughs>